Hi everyone, this is Alan Lepofsky from Constellation Research. I've just returned home from Atlanta, Georgia, where I was attending Salesforce Connections 2016. This is Salesforce's premier event for the digital marketing world. Now, I normally cover the collaboration space, so for me attending a marketing event was very interesting, and I was excited about figuring out where these two worlds collide. What do marketing professionals need around collaboration tools? And as many of you may know, I used to be a head of marketing at a software company, so I'm quite familiar with blending these two worlds together, so I was super excited to attend this event and learn more about Salesforce in this space. Now, to do this, I want to go over what the Salesforce portfolio is with you. So most people may be familiar with the origins of Salesforce, what they call the sales cloud. This is the CRM or customer relationship management or SFA, Salesforce automation side of Salesforce. And just a few years ago, that's essentially what Salesforce did. Sales professionals used the tools to record their customers, their prospects, their clients, etc., and keep track of their interactions with them. But over just a few years, Salesforce has grown at an incredible pace to do a lot more as a company. They have customer support or customer service, community, which is the collaboration side, so things like Salesforce Chatter, Salesforce Files, and Salesforce Communities, where people log on and discuss things with uh, either their colleagues or the brands that they want to interact with. Marketing, which we're going to talk a lot about today. Their analytics cloud for providing all sorts of information and data and insights back to people. Their application platform. This is things like Force.com and Heroku and Salesforce One. So you can build custom applications in Salesforce. And then their IoT cloud. For today, though, I want to primarily focus on the two areas that matter most to me. First, that being the community cloud. We'll, we're going to get to that in a minute. But uh, for the heart of this event is the marketing cloud. Now, for me to discuss the marketing cloud, I wanted to really make sure I understood all the components, and I'm going to share all of that story with you now. So let's take a look at their portfolio. The first part is the business to consumer side of what the Salesforce Marketing Cloud does. So business to consumer, that means brands engaging with their prospects and their customers at the individual level. So the places I buy things from, the clothing stores, the furniture stores, the manufacturing, uh, food, entertainment, you know, the, the, the brands that I want to deal with. How do those companies sell me things, provide me services, target ads to me, etc.? And so what Salesforce Marketing Cloud has in this space is divided into two pieces. The first are the studios. Now, studios are the channels, the way they can get access to those people. And that's via email, mobile devices, mobile not just being tablets and, and phones, but things like car dashboards or bus advertising signs. It's you know just devices. Think of it more as devices than mobile. Social, so social media sites, places that you know people engage in social networking, the Facebooks, the Twitter, so on and so forth. Website, so your, your company's website, your home pages, et cetera, creating a compelling experience. Uh, and then advertising, so those you know little square banner ads that you see popping up everywhere. So essentially, these are all the channels that people have that brands have to get access to their prospects and their customers. Now, when you're dealing in each of those channels, you use services. So there's the things that you want to do. Studios are the ways you get access to the people, and the builders or the services are the ways you interact with them. So what Salesforce has here is five different builders. Journey Builder. So this is how you visually map out the workflows that you have dealing with people. So things like visited website, wait two days, send them an email, or you know, somebody downloaded a white paper, you know, how do we contact them? You know, all of the different things, the workflows that happen between a brand and a consumer, and there's obviously literally hundreds of them, and this tool is just to drag and drop and create those. Audience is how you figure out you know, who it is you're connecting with and how you build those lists and how you target the right people. Content is how you create those emails, the, the banner ads, the things that go on social media, etc. It's you know, where you create things. Personalization is how you make it all about me. That's the main thing that brands need to do to engage with people is personalize their content. You hear a lot of the term one-to-one -one these days. Brands used to create ads that sort of reached everybody or reached a target demographic. You created one ad for an age group or one ad for a geography. Now brands are having to create ads and services and deals and coupons and things to the individual level. So when I get a message from the clothing company I like to buy, I don't want to see just what 
shoes they have on sale or what pants they have on sale. I want to know which ones they have in the styles that I've bought from them in the past and they're still available in my size. So personalization. And then obviously analytics to sort of figure out you know, what's working and what's not working. So those studios and builders are what make up the business to consumer side of Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Now they also have a business to business side. This is where your company is engaging with customers or prospects at the company level. So this is where you have sales reps and marketing teams involved and you're building pipeline and nurturing accounts and doing lead scoring and all those things. So it's, you know, your, your sales reps may be assigned geographies or, you know, industries or things like that. And so your company dealing with other companies. And in this space, Salesforce has Pardot and Engage. Now, again, I'm not an expert in the marketing cloud side of things, but to me, I'd say, you know, why, did, why don't you just name Pardot um, Lead Studio, uh, you know, and kind of mix it into the rest of the family. But that's for discussion for another day. Now, so this is sort of hopefully giving you an overview. This is what I learned about at the event. Um, Salesforce has done a really nice job of summarizing this for you, probably better than I could, if you're an existing customer, of what the existing products are. So you see the URL here and how it maps to this new world. So what you see over here on the left-hand side of the screen are those studios. So let me circle this sort of left-hand side for you here. Not a very good circle, but sorry. So you have you know email going to email, mobile, mobile, social, ads has been you know renamed advertising, a little more professional, and you know web is web. So those are the, um, the studios. Now over here, sort of in the middle of the screen, these are the old names. And now down here you have the five new builders. So they've really made it much easier to sort of understand. So two new things have, have been added to the builders, audience builder and personalization builder. And you'll see in just a moment how they've sort of reorganized the features. So for example, what used to be in data and analytics for, for figuring out the context and figuring out the audience, well, they've taken that out of analytics because it didn't you know, make a lot of sense fitting in there. And they've created a specific builder just for figuring out the lists and the audiences and the people that you're going to deal with. So that's audience builder. So now web and analytics is really just about the reports and, and generation of statistics and things like that. So contacts and audience in their own builder. Same thing for personalization. What used to be specific to email and web is now taken out and is its own builder. And again, I sort of explained what that is. That's predictively, you know, creating dynamic content. So web ads, banner ads, emails, SMS messages, whichever, you know, messages on dashboards of cars, you know, wherever it happens to be, it's not sending you and I the same message. It's making sure that it knows what our buying patterns are, what our likes are, what our preferences are, maybe what our network of people are doing and recommendations from you know, my peers and things like that. But it's creating dynamic content tailored specifically for me. So personalization. Again, that top right corner, you can see the URL if you want to go read a lot more about what Salesforce has done to change the marketing cloud from the old names to the new names. Now, I want to get back to focusing on my primary area. If you look at this portfolio that I, I drew before and the, the whole overarching picture of Salesforce, I'm most interested in the community and the marketing cloud. So community, again, is collaboration. It's Salesforce Chatter, it's Salesforce Files, and it's Salesforce Communities, which are, again, those places you log on, you have conversations with your peers, you may buy products in those. It's really sort of the engagement side of things. Salesforce has done a great job of embedding community into the sales and service clouds. So what I mean by that is, for example, if you are on a customer CRM record or a service opportunity, a lead, uh, you know, an open trouble ticket, any of those systems of record in the sales or service cloud, they've embedded chatter feeds so that employees can directly discuss that customer or that lead or that uh, you know, open trouble ticket, whatever. They've embedded really good direct collaboration inside those objects. They have not done that yet in the marketing cloud. So when I'm looking at a marketing campaign, the internal employees that are building that campaign, the people that you know work in the marketing department, can't directly have a discussion about the campaigns or about the journeys, et cetera. So when we are building out the maps that we want our customers or our prospects to go on, 
you have to sort of switch back to chatter and have a different conversation in a, in a different place. It loses the context. Now, I've also added that the one that interests me the most of all the builders is that journey builder. So there's a lot of things that happen in community that should be part of the journey that the marketing cloud handles. So for example, just joining a community is an event. So I join a community. That should be an object inside the journey builder that allows marketing to send me a welcome email or send me a welcome tweet, etc. Maybe I post content in the community or I answer a question in the community. All of these things should be objects in the journey builder uh, that the marketing cloud can take advantage of. So that's my quick summary. Again, from my perspective, looking forward to seeing where Salesforce goes, bringing community and marketing clouds closer together. This is Alan Lepofsky from Constellation Research. I hope this has been helpful. And if there's any questions I can answer for you, please reach out and let me know. Till next time, have a good day. Bye.